Deep in the heart of the remote jungles of Ecuador, there lurks a deadly arachnid. One that probes through the night, tirelessly hunting for prey. Now, I've heard that these spiders are among some of the most aggressive on Earth. And with venom that could potentially kill a human being, this could make them one of the deadliest creatures in these forests. I am traveling deep into this formidable rainforest, over hanging bridges and through dense vegetation, to hopefully come face to face with one of these deadly creatures to answer this single question. How deadly is the bite of the Brazilian wandering spider? Why? Because that's my job. My name is Jack, and I've dedicated my entire life to traveling all over the globe to find the strangest and deadliest creatures alive. I'm willing to get in close where others wouldn't dare in order to uncover and share the truth about even our most dangerous and misunderstood animals. Tonight, my sights are set on the deadliest spider in the New World, the Brazilian Wandering Spider. I've heard rumors all my life that these are among some of the most aggressive and deadly spiders on Earth, and I'm setting out to see if that's truly the case. How will I answer this question for myself? You'll just have to wait and see. Okay, folks, so today I'm in some beautiful lowland tropical forests here in the beautiful country of Ecuador, and I am on the hunt for one of the most venomous spiders in the New World. Today we are searching for the iconic wandering spider. I'm looking today for Phonutria depilata, a species of Brazilian wandering spider. Now I'm hoping to not only find one of these spiders, but to showcase the reality behind these creatures by handling it. So we're gonna poke around this amazing forest. It's a little bit sprinkly, but that's just what we got to work with here in the rainforest. So hopefully we can find one of these amazingly toxic spiders and hopefully we can uh, get hands on, so to speak, without any uh, major medical repercussions. So uh, let's see really uh, how mean, how cantankerous, how dangerous really is the wandering spider. As their name might suggest, wandering spiders spend their nights slowly crawling around hunting for prey. Their calculated movements can be deceptive though, as these spiders can be incredibly fast when they need to be. My job tonight is to keep my eyes peeled for any movement and scan every plant and leaf for one of these monstrous spiders. Are these truly mindless aggressive killers? Or are we missing the bigger picture? So essentially what we're doing here today, folks, is I'm just kind of checking every broad leaf. These wandering spiders, as the name might suggest, are extremely nomadic spiders. And they spend most of their time on top of or underneath these large broad leaves. And that's where they do their hunting. Just like the Cupienia spiders we saw in Costa Rica, these animals wait in ambush and they are sneaky. They crawl around on these leaves and they wait for a katydid or a roach or other insect to cross their path and then boom, they pounce. And then they whip themselves up under that leaf and enjoy that delicious succulent meal. So when there's a little bit of rain cover, a little bit of sprinkling, uh, we could see some heightened insect activity, which means that those wandering spiders could be out in full force. So we're going to keep poking around. I'm really, really hoping for a good sized one because I want to show you all just how amazing these spiders can be. The Brazilian wandering spiders belong to the genus Phonutria and drop for drop have some of the most potent venom on Earth. In terms of general toxicity, these spiders rival even the fearsome Sydney funnel web as the most venomous spiders on the planet. While they generally use this venom as a means of procuring food, it can also be a powerful weapon to use in their defense. They possess a powerful neurotoxic venom that can wreak havoc on the human body and potentially can kill in as little as 60 minutes. Bites can cause blood pressure issues, irregular heart rate, painful priapism, 
and yes, even death. The bites of these spiders are no joke, and certainly nothing to underestimate. Finally, after tirelessly scanning the jungle for hours, I spotted the infamous arachnid I had been searching for. Oh, I got one! I got one! Oh my gosh, Jay, get over here! I got it in! I got it in! Woo-hoo-hoo. Oh my gosh! I wish I was wearing my hat. It'd be so much easier to get my freaking flashlight to behave. Oh, shake down. I don't want to pinch your sweet little legs there. Oh, no way! Shake down! Oh, oh. Right here, folks. This is what we were searching for right here in this container is Phonutria depilata. Now this is a true wandering spider, very, very close cousin to Phonutria fera, the true nominal Brazilian wandering spider, but this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spider. I was just so hoping that we were gonna be able to find an adult. We were starting to get discouraged. We've been out here for so long. We hadn't seen much of anything, but this little sprinkling rain, I think brought out this spectacular little creature. We got a little bit of water in there. She was just taking shelter right in between these two leaves here. I just happened to see two little legs sticking out. Wow! Now, we understand how venomous these spiders are, but just how dangerous are they really? I've heard that any wandering spider in the genus Phonutria is an aggressive and dangerous spider, quick to inject a lethal dose of venom into any human who approaches too close. But is that really the case? Is the deadly venom of these spiders quick to be shared with any creature that invades their personal space? Understanding how deadly an animal's bite is can be a more nuanced task than you might imagine. The simple fact of venom potency isn't all I'm looking at today. I want to know just how likely it is to be bitten by one of these spiders. And there's only one way I know how to do that. And that's by holding one in my bare hands. Spiders are not the monsters we make them out to be. These are not the devilish incarnations of evil that people think they are. They're just animals trying to survive in the wild. And even something as potentially dangerous as this wandering spider here plays an important role in its ecosystem and an important role in the health of our planet as a whole. So I don't know about you folks, but I'm thinking I could probably handle this spider, right? I mean, it's just one of the most toxic spiders in uh, South America, but I mean, isn't that what I came here to do? To see just how aggressive these spiders can really be, how dangerous they might be if you were to encounter one in the wild? Uh, I think so. Shall we see? Okay, girl, it's all right, no need to be afraid. You've seen it here first, folks. That is a wild wandering spider that I'm holding. This is not a captive animal. This is, we've, we found this right here in the jungles of Ecuador. Oh my gosh, this is, this is an amazing experience and an amazing indication on the true behavior of many of these spiders. I know so many of you have probably seen images online of the impressive threat displays of these spiders, but those only occur once these animals feel threatened. See how I'm handling her so calmly. I'm respecting her space and her autonomy. She's able to move freely. And by doing so, she does not feel threatened. She does not feel the need to defend herself against me. And so here I am, in really in no harm, holding one of the most toxic spiders on earth. As we can see here, without threatening this wandering spider, it has felt no desire to defend itself against me. 
Of course, this may not always be the case. There are many species of wandering spiders in the genus Phonutria, some more toxic and defensive than others. But it's important to know that these animals maybe aren't what you thought originally. Arachnids often get a pretty bad rap, especially those that are legitimately dangerous. But there's more to these creatures than what first meets the eye. Despite having a potent venom, these animals are far from hunting humans down to harm and kill us. These are animals trying their best to survive in an ever-competitive and cutthroat world. Look at that, folks. This right here, this is Phonutria depilata. This is 100% a wandering spider right here on my hand, which is fantastic because you get to see, once again, spiders are not these mindless, horrific monsters. They are animals, the same as a monkey or a tapir or a poison dart frog that are also living in these forests. And they have important roles to play. They are so vital in managing insect populations and functioning as small predators. They're eating all sorts of lizards and amphibians and all sorts of stuff, which can help keep diseases from spreading in populations of smaller animals. She feels my breath a little bit. She's wandering, that traditional wandering style of walking that these spiders have. This is so spectacular, folks. That is a wandering spider on my hand. I can't get over that. Now, wandering spider venom is downright insidious. With an impressive LD50, these spiders easily beat out some of the deadliest snakes on Earth for venom potency. And with such a widespread range throughout Central and South America, these are truly some of the deadliest creatures in our New World jungles. When a wandering spider feels threatened enough to actually bite, they can cause some nasty side effects. When bitten, the venom can cause our nervous system to go into panic mode. Now this can elevate heart rate and affect blood pressure at a seriously dangerous level. The pain of the bite is additionally said to be excruciating as the neurotoxin moves throughout your body causing cascading effects within. In men, painful priapism can even take place, in which blood becomes trapped in the erectile tissue, which, if not managed, can lead to necrosis, necessitating amputation. And if that's not terrible enough, folks, these effects all put together can eventually even lead to death. Though, with the help of modern medicine, that is now, thankfully, a much rarer occurrence. Okay, folks, so to send my point as best as I can, I'm gonna let this wandering spider crawl into my face. Now, of course, I don't recommend anybody do this, but once again, I am just so, so, so passionate about dispelling the myths around some of these super important and widely misunderstood creatures that I'm willing to risk something like this just to send that point home. Come here. That is a wandering spider on my face. Now, as you can see, this animal has no interest in hurting me, has no interest in harming me in any way. She's just crawling around. Do you want me to get her? No, 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 I think I got her. I feel her. She's coming back onto my hand. Let's try that one more time. And she just bites me right on the eyeball. No, she's a sweetheart. Even though these animals might have a scary or creepy exterior, they, like so much more of the misunderstood creatures of our planet, have just been given a bad reputation through media and through other such vectors of misinformation. These are just such spectacular animals. I don't understand how you couldn't like these. I get spiders aren't for everybody, but 
the, the elegance of this creature as it probes its way through the night, hunting for prey just as many species like it have done since before the time of the dinosaurs. There's just a simple beauty in the elegance of these creatures out here surviving. Wow, this is so spectacular, folks. I love this. So how deadly is the bite of the Brazilian wandering spider? Potentially quite deadly. The venom potency alone lends itself to a potentially life-threatening bite, especially for children and the elderly. It's a powerful, active neurotoxin that is incredibly aggressive once injected into the human body. The venom causes a variety of nasty effects and is likely among one of the most painful spider bites on Earth. Despite all this scary information about the venom, you all could see that this arachnid had no interest in biting me today. While this may not always be the case from species to species or individual to individual, it goes to show that your risk of actually being bitten isn't nearly as high as you might have expected. Spiders need their venom to procure and digest their food, and they're not as quick to waste it if they feel that they can flee danger first. Just because an animal has the ability to kill us, it does not mean they are actively trying to do so. Well, my friends, I think we've had an amazing time with our spectacular wandering spider friend here. We love her so much, but it's time, my friends, to let her get back into her native environment to do what she does best, which is being an amazing and beautiful and active component of her native ecosystem. So we thank our lovely little wandering spider friend, maybe perhaps with a kiss. Little kiss to the abdomen never hurt anybody. And we're gonna let her right back where we found her. Take a look at this, folks. Right onto this leaf here. It's okay, sweet love. And there she goes. Back to being an amazing component of this fantastic rainforest ecosystem. So my friends, that's all I've really got for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed getting up close and personal with such an amazing species as this. I know I did. These types of interactions are always my favorite to show you all the real story behind some of nature's most fearsome or scary creatures. So my friends, it's time for me to bid you adieu. So if I left you with anything, I hope I left you with this. No matter how creepy or scary or maybe even dangerous an animal may be, they're still an important and vital member of their respective ecosystem. Even though we might not like spiders, we still have to culture a respect and appreciation in ourselves for their existence. Because without them, many of these beautiful rainforests and tropical areas, and even right in your own backyard, those ecosystems would begin to crumble inward and collapse and fail. These animals are incredibly important. You don't have to like spiders, they don't have to be your best friend, but you do have to respect them and appreciate the jobs that they serve that you benefit from. So thanks so much for watching, my friends. I hope you enjoyed me getting up close and personal and intimate with this fantastic spider, and I hope to see you with the next upload. So until then, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next Friday.